Hey, 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 happy holidays. Come on in, pull up a chair. The Gaming Gang Dispatch is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang, and happy holidays. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host, here at the Gaming Gang Dispatch, brought to you by, amazingly enough, thegaminggang.com, which I happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief. So welcome aboard. Tonight is Wednesday, December 21st, 2022. This is live stream 867. I believe it is 67. Either that or it's 68. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think. Did I change the date? I know I've got the correct date, like December 21st. I'm trying to remember if this is 867. Seven or eight? Well, it's a lot. There are a lot of the live shows, and this is the latest. So there is that. If you're not familiar with the dispatch, well, you could probably tell already. Super, super casual around here. Just hanging out, talking about the latest in tabletop gaming news, and then taking a peek at a tabletop game. Tonight will be no different. We're actually going to be wrapping up the final show of 2022 with a War Game Wednesday. That's right. We're going to take a look at The Hill of Death, Champion Hill, from Tiny Battle Publishing. It is designed by my good pal, Herman Lutman. We'll be diving on into this in just a bit. So if you're not familiar with this show, do want to also mention that we take a look at the tabletop gaming news first. So it'll probably be about 35, 40 minutes before we dive on into the unboxing and the first look of the Hill of Death. So if you're watching live, relax, kick back, take it easy, enjoy yourself. Hopefully you're a subscriber. You can jump on into chat and uh, chat it up with other folks who are going to be swinging on in, hopefully, this evening. But if you are watching this 30 minutes or more after the stream ends, you can actually jump past the news, although I've got a lot of cool news, as always, tonight. But there will be timestamps. Those timestamps are located in the show notes, or depending on the device you happen to be using, you might have them right there in the timeline of the video. So you can kind of jump around where you would like. Of course, once again, that is... 30 minutes or more after the stream ends. Should also point out when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, you should be visiting thegaminggang.com for all the latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, a whole lot more that you won't find here on the YouTube channel. You know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. So I did mention we have chat. It is not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. Plus, you do have to be a subscriber to the channel for at least 48 hours before taking part in chat. Yet another way that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But if you want to say howdy, maybe you've got a question, a comment, by all means, chime on in. We'll do my best to respond. First, out the gate was... Deja vu. First out the gate was deja vu. <laughs> Kathy Evans is with us in chat. Coco B, 
as well as the Happy Wargamer, as opposed to their cousin, the Grumpy Wargamer. So yes, we've got the Happy Wargamer with us, as is Joseph Quam, who I believe this is Joseph's first visit in chat with us. So welcome aboard. Good to see you. So Coco B says, it's a war game winter solstice kind of day. It is pretty cold out there. I know we in the Chicago area have not get, gotten hit. We've not gotten hit. English, Jeff, use it. We've not gotten hit by that storm yet. It's supposed to be coming in tomorrow night. A couple days ago, they were telling us 15 to 20 inches of snow. Now they're telling us two to five inches, but it's going to have 60 mile an hour winds with it. So that is a little uh, frightening for some folks out here. Probably end up with whiteout conditions with that kind of wind, regardless how much snow is coming down. If it's a little bit of snow, that much wind is going to be pretty difficult to be driving in. But I know a lot of people out there throughout the United States, there is some nasty weather. Either they're going through it right now or they will be. So please be safe out there. If you don't need to leave your house and the weather's bad, you know, take it easy. Watch some old episodes of this show or some of my reviews. Or Gosh, you can go way back in time and see how stupid this, the videos look from like 10 years ago, how poor they look. The video quality, not that I'm saying they're smashing or spectacular now. Now they're just below average, <laughs> but they were pretty poor back in the day. Anyway, so hopefully folks out there are going to uh, watch out for the weather. Doug Roberts is in chat with us as well. Good to see you, Doug. All right, so let's jump on into a look at the final four of the Funko Pocket Pops from the Office Advent Calendar. That's right. You thought I was going to forget again and jump into the news and to be like, oh, wait, oh, hang on. Trust me, I came close. I came very, very close. All right. Once again, the fine folks over at Funko were kind enough to provide me with this advent calendar. It features characters from The Office, and there are 24 pocket pops, which measure about an inch in height. And to this point, I've done pretty well guessing who the characters are. I'm a fan of The Office, except for this guy. As I pointed out last night, I really, last season, of the office, I really didn't watch because it it had kind of lost, you know, its luster. And once again, I will point out, I was kind of ticked that they treated Ed Helms's character. They they completely changed him into this dickhead, which I didn't care for either. I have no idea who this is. I know it was one of the young guys that they brought in uh, in the last season. I think there were a couple of a couple of young guys they brought into the show. And he was one of them. I just don't know who it is. So there's that. All right. So we're going to cheat. We're going to take a look at today's as well as the final three days. Because this is actually my last episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch for 2022. So we're going to cheat. Let's see what we have got. These have been pretty cool. I. I like these. I I like the pops anyway. In fact, usually, you know, when I don't have my holiday decorations out there covering things up, you can you can see I've got some regular size pops behind me. All right, let's see what we've got here. And it is Is that supposed to be Creed? I'm guessing that is with blood. I'm thinking that's Creed because we have not seen Creed yet. Creed Bratton. That's right. So as we've been taking a peek at these, 
Let's kind of scoot this back so that the autofocus has an easier time saying, oh, yeah, that's what we're trying to be looking at. <laughs> so I've got a little piece of trivia here that you may not be aware of, but the character Creed Bratton was played by Creed Bratton. May not have known that. I'm trying to remember what famous band he's part of. He was, uh, he's a, I think he's a guitarist, if I remember right. But yes, I always thought it was funny. Creed Bratton is played by Creed Bratton. In fact, a lot of the characters in The Office, uh, their character names are actually, well, not their last names, but are actually their, their first names. Like Angela, the actress's name is Angela. <laughs> Phyllis, her name is, the actress's name is Phyllis. All right, so here we've got Jan. I was waiting. I knew we had to get Jan at some point. Had to get her at some point here. Uh, looks like this might be pre-boob job. Jan. <laughs> so we still have not seen Ryan. Kind of surprised. We've got two days left to take a peek at. Of course, she's got her glass of wine there. So let's see. Second to last day. Tell you right now, it's not going to be Ryan. It is. Ah. It's another Dwight. Dwight as the elf from the Christmas episode. So out of all the characters, Dwight has had three. Three of the 24 pops have been devoted to Dwight Schrute. So there we have that. We've got one left. One left. So we're going to find out if for some reason the people at Funko do not like BJ Novak <laughs> or not. There we go. That's another Christmas one. I bet you it's Michael Scott. It is Michael Scott. Yes. There we go. Michael Scott with a Santa hat like I'm wearing. <laughs> so there you have it. There we go. So once again, a big thank you to the fine folks over at Funco for sending along the office advent calendar. If uh, you'd like to pick one up for next year, they are available. Uh, they carry an MSRP at least at this point in time. The MSRP is $60. Funco.com had it for $50. But then, as I've pointed out each night as we've taken a look at the Pocket Pops, NBC.com had it for $39.95. So, pretty good deal. All right. So, there you have it. The Office Advent Calendar. We've taken a look at all 24 of the Pocket Pops. Hooray! Hooray! I see Flaming Huron's with us in chat. Good to see you, Flaming Huron. So, the first of our chat moderators has made an appearance. This evening, so welcome aboard. So, should point out before we jump on into the tabletop gaming news, please stay uh, hanging out and watching because, I don't know, might be some giveaways. I don't know. I can't tell you for sure. Just going to have to find out for yourself. And I see Chen, our friend from Taiwan, is with us. Let me hear it. Says, so, I guess they hate Ryan. Yep, looks like they don't like B.J. Novak. Which is funny because I have heard, well, I had heard that some people weren't too keen on him either. Although, B.J. Novak was one of the you know, major writers for The Office. A lot of them were. Mindy Kaling was one of the writers. And let's see, who else that we had? I don't think. I don't think Craig Robertson 
was a writer. I think he was, he was, you know, an actor, a comedian that they had brought in. Hmm. Toby. He was another one. And I believe Angela was a writer too. And they expanded their role. So like the first few episodes, you really don't see much of the other background characters. I mean, you see them in shots, but they're not very involved in the show as they would become major characters later on. Just throwing a little trivia your way. All right, let's jump on into the news because arriving in January from Medigo by way of Asmo Day is bad company. Here's the scoop. Build your own gang and customize it to suit your plans. Gather resources to complete heists and money to recruit new gang members. And make sure you escape the police. A unique and fun game from the award-winning designers of Automania and Trails of Toscana. Toscana? Toscana? Something along those lines. Bad Company supports up to six players with very little downtime. It also includes a solo mode where you try to outsmart the police. Each player has a player board with 11 gang members. You may upgrade them by placing overlapping cards onto them. This way, the visual appearances of your gang members change as they gain more abilities. Each round, the active player rolls four dice and divides them into two pairs. Pay coins to re-roll. Each pair of dice activates one gang member on the active player's board. All other players may use one of the pairs to activate a single gang member on their boards. Activating a gangster provides resources needed to complete heists, money to upgrade your gang members, or advance your car through the city. Maybe you're, maybe it's the car that you're trying to get away from the police. Yes, it is, because it says you want to advance your car. Maybe I should have read the next sentence before I started talking. Because you need to stay ahead of the police in order to collect loot along the city route. You gain points by completing heists, upgrading your gang, and by driving your car through the city. Some completed heists provide special abilities, which you can build your strategy around. Game ends when a player completes their sixth heist, or when any car reaches the dock on the city track. Player with the most points wins. Bad Company is for one to six players, ages eight and up. Plays in around 30 to 45 minutes. Going to carry an MSRP of $54.99 when it arrives early next month. All right. Actually, I think it's later in the month. I shouldn't say early next month. I think it's a little later is the scheduled release date. For some reason, I think 17th is what I may have seen online. I don't like to quote dates. Because especially nowadays, with all the shipping delays and strangeness, you never know. Let's see, who just floated on in? Christopher Rush is with us, as is Mr. Eddie T. So our second of our chat moderators is with us as well. And I wouldn't be shocked if Sarah D is lurking somewhere as well. Moving right along. Arriving in stores from GMT Games is Twilight Struggle Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa. Here's the skinny. Twilight Struggle Red Sea, Conflict in the Horn of Africa is a two-player standalone card-driven game that builds on the award-winning Twilight Struggle. The year is 1974, and the Soviet Union and the United States have been locked in a life-or-death struggle across the globe. As so often happened during the Cold War, a relatively obscure region of the world suddenly took center stage. Emperor Hali Salisi I of Ethiopia, I'm sure I've mispronounced that, a bedrock U.S. ally in Africa, had grown old and increasingly dictatorial. In 1974, a group of young Marxist officers staged a coup and took hold of the reins of power. This revolutionary leadership sparked a chain of events that upset the regional balance of power 
Putin unleashed all the familiar elements of Cold War competition in the Horn of Africa. Twilight Struggle Red Sea asks players to once more answer the summons of the trumpets and bear the burden of a Twilight Struggle, this time centered around East Africa, the Arabian Gulf, and the vital sea lanes stretching between them. Twilight Struggle Red Sea is in addition to GMT's lunchtime series and packs deep decision-making into a time frame that allows players to get in a quick game or explore different strategies several times in one session. With a more limited scope and much shorter playtime, Twilight Struggle Red Sea is the perfect way to introduce new players to the Twilight Struggle system. And yet this game maintains all the tension, decision-making, and theme of the original classic. As an added bonus for a longer game, cards from Twilight Struggle can be integrated into Twilight Struggle Red Sea, and players can add new decisions and Cold War events to their games of Twilight Struggle by incorporating cards from, you guessed it, Twilight Struggle Red Sea. The game is for, once again, two players ages 12 and up. I don't know about that. I usually, about 14 and up is what I usually think with most GMT releases, but you know, you never know. Plays in around 35 to 75 minutes. Does carry an MSRP of $39. So very, very nice. I got to mention that there are some, some of the GMT games that are kind of releasing right now kind of flew under my radar. So just like if you go to the GMT games website, it doesn't show that this is shipping. But it's scheduled to come out this week. So I don't know. I have no idea. I do also want to mention, I have had some folks email me asking, uh, how come they haven't seen much GMT games coverage lately? I haven't received anything. So what I've received last, we took a look at. I got to be honest, it's, it's possible that GMT has decided maybe not to send review copies to me anymore because it's been really tough for me to get reviews, especially of their more complex war games. It's been tough to get reviews out. Just very difficult for me to get them to the table. And I'm not a person who reads the rules of something a board game, say, and then provides a review because you haven't played the game. You've read the rules to the game. Now, that said, role-playing game books, absolutely different. <laughs> right? Dante Viper Brandolini is with us once again. Welcome aboard. So let's move along and talk about some role-playing game news because Cubicle 7 Entertainment has teamed up with Humble Bundle for a massive money-saving offer on Warhammer 40K, Wrath and Glory. I've got the deets on the deal. A grim future of glorious adventure. The sinister schemes of the chaos gods have shattered the galaxy. The great rift tore through space and reality pushing mortal life to the precipice of oblivion. The Gilead system has lost contact with the vast Imperium, trapped in the silent darkness. As the shadows of extinction loom, hope fades, but is not yet entirely extinguished. Rallied by the rogue traitor Jekyll Verionis, a disparate group are dedicated to doing what must be done to keep the Gilead system from being consumed by the darkness. Can they resist the machinations of chaos, as well as the plots of those who see the rift as an opportunity to further their own power? Time is running out in the 41st millennium. This accursed age needs heroes more than ever. Will you answer the call? There's boundless adventure beyond the Great Rift. Grab your D6s and embark on a grim and glorious journey in a system cut off from the Emperor's light in Warhammer 40K Roleplay Wrath and Glory. This tabletop role-playing game bundle features everything you need for limitless Warhammer 40,000 adventure 
including the core rulebook, guides to vehicles and space hulks, exciting scenarios, and a wealth of resources for players and game masters. Prepare for dark, epic science fiction role playing and help support the children's health in Ireland with your purchase. I believe the exact title is Children's Health Ireland. These savings are going to run through January 4th. You can score all 24 PDFs as well as a coupon for, I believe it's 15% off physical books and releases, I guess I should say, from Cubicle 7 Entertainment. It'll cost you $18. That is a sweet, sweet deal. And I got to give it up to my friends over at Cubicle 7 Entertainment because this role-playing game originally came out from Ulysses Spiel and Games Workshop wasn't happy with, I believe, they weren't happy with the way that it was presented. The rules were kind of a mishmash. This is actually a very interesting setting and it's different. It's it's not your typical Warhammer 40K, which I know some people don't like about this because you end up having to ally with races, Xenos of some sort, right? The other, the mutant, which normally you would not see, but it's, it's sort of the enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of deal with this. And I got to give it up to Cubicle 7 because they came in, they took over this line, and they have some, they've supported this extremely well. In fact, they supported this far better than Ulysses Spiel did before they got booted off of it. So, Bedrin Graybelox is with us saying heresy. Yes, a lot of people, right, uh, a lot of stalwarts, a lot of diehards, a lot of the Warhammer 40k grill yards are like, yeah, no, no, this would never happen. Never, ever. You'd never see the Space Marines working with the Eldar. Now I, I know they got a different name. So, so Dante points out that I have wonderful reviews of all the Goodman Games books. Well, I have reviews of their original adventures reincarnated. I still have my sixth volume I need to review uh, and a few other Goodman Games releases but unfortunately not as much as I would like I would love to review a lot of Goodman Games stuff they're just not interested they're, you know there's not much I can do I still share news from them all the time but yeah I, I gave up I gave up trying so there is that. Moving right along. Fearful Symmetries for Trail of Cthulhu is making its way into stores following a successful crowdfunding project. I've got the details from Pilgrane Press. The Secret War is coming to England, and you are the warriors. Albion, the primeval and perfect England of William Blake, is broken by war in heaven and turmoil amongst mankind. Heroes arise to build Jerusalem anew in the green and pleasant land, guided by Blake's visionary poetry. In this supplement to Trail of Cthulhu, you play a group of magicians exploring the magical revival, wielding the terrible double-edged power that grants both dominion and degeneration. With its companion volume, The Book of the New Jerusalem, Fearful Symmetries gives the character guidelines for building an improvised campaign with dangers drawn from English folklore and mythos abomination. Four systems of magic are described along with locations, threats, tomes, and characters. Use Fearful Symmetries to flesh out the struggle between the lurking horror and the shriveled good intentions of those who think such power can be contained, controlled, by mere mortals. 
magical battle for England is coming. Is your humanity the price of victory? The 224-page hardcover of Fearful Symmetries is supposed to be available at the end of the month. It's going to carry an MSRP of $39.95. As far as I can tell, there is not a PDF available of this as of yet. So, Dante has pointed out that they bought four books because of me. Oh, you're preaching to the choir in chat. You're preaching to the choir, Dante. Because they know. They, they know. They've blown a lot of money, too. <laughs> yeah, so Coco B says, tell Goodman Games, Dante, that you heard about them here. I point that out all the time. We'll, ta- we'll mention that. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that after I wrap up the news because we can, we can talk about ways that you can help the gaming gang, help support the gaming gang. doesn't cost you a dime, but it will help spread the word. My final news piece, the modern era role-playing game Special Agency has received a new edition from author Juancho Duma Dragunov. Ugh, I know I butchered that. Sorry. But I've got the dope. Special Agency is a tabletop role-playing game that allows you to participate with your imagination and some rules in contemporary action and adventure movies, series, books, comics, and video games. Players take on the role of police agents in any of their multiple facets, federal, local, or international, or get into the skin of terrorists, thieves, and criminals in general with the aim of having a Good time, fun, investigation, and tactical action. I don't know about the terrorist part there. I want to drop that. You know, it's it's just me. Most people don't want to play as terrorists. You can can make them freedom fighters. That's fine. Because, you know, one person's freedom fighter is another person's terrorist. The special agency world is the same as the one we find ourselves in. The agents and the overseer are players in a living environment, which works by the same rules as our own. Special agency gets you right into conspiracies, adventures and exploration, political intrigues, criminal actions, or police investigations. In the style of action series and movies, players can be at any level of an organization or be lone wolves control the judicial apparatus of the city, or become vigilantes with their own agenda. They can also choose a date between 1850 and 2099 for their cases and actions and atone for their adventures, comedy, suspense, action, horror, adventure, or tragedy. Although the game is centered in North America, it can be set up anywhere in the world. The 317-page PDF the second edition of Special Agency is available right now at Drive Through RPG for five dollars and thirty cents. Yes, you heard me right. Five dollars and thirty cents. And if you are a regular hanging out in chat, you already know the author from time to time hangs out in chat with us. So I thought, you know what? I will share a news piece about his game. So we may have an opportunity to take a peek at this because it is there. uh, I think it's a Lulu print on demand that this is available from. But the author, uh, Wancho, was concerned because he uses AI art in the book. And of course, I was just talking the other night about AI artwork and how Chaosium Inc. said that they will not utilize any AI art if any artist working for them is looking to, you know, submit artwork on any of the projects that is AI art. They're asking them not to. But the thing is, those are bigger publishers, right? 
those are the publishers that artists make a living working for, freelancing for. Small publishers, I don't expect them to be sitting there shelling out money they don't have for art. So I tend to be pretty forgiving. And as we can see here, it's actually fine. It's okay. I, I, I don't see a small indie publisher putting anybody out of work because of this. So nothing for the author to worry about. So there is that. So uh, Christopher says, yes, Jeff makes him want to spend money. Because I'm always sharing news. Always sharing news of pretty cool stuff. All right. So that is the news tonight. So of course, I was just talking about drive through RPG. Don't forget, Gaming Gang, thus the Dispatch, is affiliated with the One Bookshelf site. So if you are going to visit, oh, I don't know, drive through RPG, please stop by thegaminggang.com first. Click on one of our banner ads. That way, if you happen to make a purchase, I get a small portion of that sale. All those nickels, dimes, and quarters really do add up and help keep the gaminggang.com around. Also should mention, if you're going to any of the other One Bookshelf sites, say like Dungeon Masters Guild, yeah, I, I said it right this time. For some reason, I always screw it up. Or War Games Vault or Storytellers Vault, any of those sites, drive through cards. You can still go to thegaminggang.com, click on the drive through RPG banners, and then when you get to drive through RPG, look to the lower left, you'll see all the other one bookshelf sites. Click on where you got to go, and the affiliate code will remain with you. So I like to point that out as well. Also, if you like this video, if you dig the channel, if you find thegaminggang.com to be a valuable resource, Hell, if you just like what we do, by all means, please swing by paypal.me slash the gaming gang and making a small donation. Maybe you can buy me a cup of coffee or a soda or something. Seeing that this is soda, not coffee. Yes, my diet right. My sodium free diet right. Thankfully, a lot of people out there do utilize drive through RPG as well, or they swing on over to paypal.me, and it is certainly appreciated. Thank you very much for that, everybody. So, got a, a bit of, uh, I don't know if I want to say house cleaning, but got a few things I do want to talk about before we jump on into our first look at the Hill of Death, Champion Hill from Tiny Battle Publishing, which is run by my pal Mark H. Walker. Uh, but anyway, a few things I did want to mention. And before I forget, I said, well, I'll, I'll tell you how you can, you know, help support thegaminggang.com without actually spending any money. Which, of course, if you're buying stuff that you've seen reviews of on the gaming gang or on the show, or you've seen news of or first looks, unboxings, what have you, reach out to that publisher and let them know where you saw it. Because the reality is a great many of the publishers who send out review copies have absolutely no idea what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Whose audience is uh, buying and whose audience just hangs out and watches their videos. So that is one of the important things. I'll share the other things to help support the channel, help the channel grow. Thumb up the video. I'm shocked when we'll have like 15 people in chat and then the show's over and I I, you know, finish up down here in the duct tape studios and head back up into the real world and start, you know, doing the 
the the timestamps and stuff, and I see nine people liked the video. It's like, but we had 15 people in chat, and all of them were sort of regular. So if you're hanging out in chat and you're not giving a thumbs up, you're not helping out. You're not. And I, and I don't know. Why, why are you here? <laughs> I'm kidding. Joking. Well, I'm joking about the why you're here, but I mean, really doesn't help. Something else, comment on the videos. You don't have to write a novella, but comment on the videos. It shows engagement. That's what YouTube is looking for. YouTube is looking for a few different things. Of course, they're not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you what they're looking for. They refuse to do that, but eh, people figure it out. So they're looking for how long do people watch the videos? So if, if you got a video out there that you've shot and people are tuning out after 10 seconds, YouTube is not going to be interested in, in sharing that on the, you know, your little sidebar that uh, has like recommended videos. So the amount of time the video gets watched, so the engagement, more engagement is with the thumbs up or thumbs down. Doesn't matter. Both of those work equally well. Hopefully, don't be thumbing down the videos if you like them. I don't, I don't want it. I, I like the engagement. I don't like the, you know, the shock to the ego. Where it's like, who the hell didn't like that? Like I made the announcement about more role-playing game coverage uh, in 2023. I think there's like three people who thumbed it down. I'm like, seriously? You went to the trouble of going, ah, don't like that. Maybe they were hoping I was going to say, hey, I'm done. I'm finished. And, of course, they look for comments. Once again, that's showing engagement. So that always helps out. And if you want to help as far as seeing more games, more publishers, reach out. If if there's a, a game company that you like the releases from, shoot them an email and say, hey, I don't know, are you are you aware of the gaming gang? Have you ever seen Jeff McLear's videos? And some of them may, and some of them may not like me. I mean, that's a possibility. There are there are companies out there who aren't too keen on me. There are companies out there I'm not too keen on either. But that's also a way to help out. Because I have had companies over the years where it's like, hey, you know, we understand that you share news about us all the time. But you've never reviewed any of our games. I'm like, no, because you've never sent me anything. They're like, oh, okay. All right. So... Fleming Heron says, who's disliking a video? I suppose any engagement is good, but I just don't like the video. I don't thumbs down videos either. I'm like, whatever. I mean, if I don't like something, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll stop watching it. I'll be like, the hell with it. I'm done. <laughs> so Dante's putting out the, like the, the Santa hat. William Hell is Ice is with us. Or Hell has Ice is with us. I never nod. William wants that pronounced. Hell has eyes, maybe. <laughs> yeah, William says Steve Jackson brought him there, brought him to the show. Yes, he personally dropped you off. I have nothing against Steve Jackson personally. I'll just leave it at that. I have nothing against Steve Jackson personally. But there are more than more people than just Steve Jackson who works for his company. All right, so there is that. So if you may recall, now you got to go find it. I had a contest to win a copy of Lawson Seasons of Mystery in PDF. Yes, and I have the winner. The winner is Coco B. That's right. Coco B is in chat. I believe. Maybe they've left. Maybe they're like, 
fuck this show. I'm leaving. Like, I had enough of this. I'm going to go thumb down some videos. Yes, Coco B is the winner, and Coco B has my email address. So by all means, shoot me an email. I will get you that copy of Seasons of Mystery. Actually, you need to shoot me an email as well, because I have some information about that package that was sent to you up in Canada. And according to UPS, who had finally responded to me, because it's impossible to talk to any human being with UPS. They love giving me a runaround. They love to do this, oh, you can't do that by phone. You have to go online and do that. And then you go online to it, to do it. And online it says, oh, you can't do that online. You have to call to do it. Coco B says, yes, they're leaving now. They're like, yes, I got, I got my winnings. I'm going. I got my prize. Get some of that stuff back out of the way. Uh, but anyway, I have been told that, unfortunately, you have to tackle it on your end because it got through customs. So once it got through customs, it was out of UPS here in the U.S.'s hands. I don't know. I don't know. So Flaming Heron asks uh, about the Doctor Who starter set PDF giveaway. I thought I did. I could have swore I gave it away. Pretty sure. I don't know. I'll, I'll take a look. I will take a look. Uh, yes, Flaming Heron says typical passing the buck. Yeah, it's... Uh, I can see why UPS is one of the most hated corporations in all the world or companies. I don't know. Maybe they're not a corporation, but I tell you because that package got shipped out on my birthday. It shipped out on October 24th. The last update of anything happening with it was November 15th. And the indication is it's in transit. William says Trudeau's got it. Stealing role-playing game books. I can't believe that they hit Coco B up with a pretty heavy uh, customs fee. And I get it. I understand. Canada loves to hit people up with custom fees for stuff coming from the United States. Even, I guess, people pay customs on gifts that people send. Somebody had told me that. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't live in Canada and I rarely ship things to Canada. But uh, when I ship stuff from now on, I am not doing any UPS. I had not had any problems at all, but this is just ridiculous. Anyway, so something else I want to share with you is I wanted to share with you the numbers on YouTube. For the Gaming Gang channel in 2022, yes, I understand we still have a few days left in the month, but full disclosure, here we go. I'm going to show you from my end what I get to see, and when people see what I make through YouTube, you're probably going to be like, what? There you go. So the channel, I know it's it's. I can barely read it because it's, it's pretty small as my preview window. But the channel pulled in over a quarter million views for the year, over 36,000 hours of watch time. We pulled in 2.6 thousand new subscribers. And there you see what I made from YouTube for the year to this point. You could probably add another... Ah, 25 bucks. That's probably what we'd be looking at. So there you have it. So just think how many millions of views people need to get to, to make a, you know, a living off like doing YouTube. It's crazy. Anyway, but <clears throat> pretty cool. Over a quarter of a million views on the videos. 
I know, I know. There's plenty of outlets out there. They'd be like, give me a break. Big deal. I don't know. It's a big deal to me. Big deal to me. Because it was just, it was earlier this year that the channel passed 1 million video views. So just think. So Flaming Aaron says, are those real dollars, Jeff, or YouTube funny money? No, it's real dollars. Yeah, the way it, it, the way it works with any, anything you got set up with Google. So like if you have like Google ads on your website, which I do not. Um, what they'll do is if you make over a hundred dollars a month, the next month they'll make a direct deposit. So on average, it's about a hundred dollars, about a hundred dollars. How much is a brand new Cadillac? About a hundred dollars. How much is a candy bar? About a hundred dollars. How much do you make uh, streaming on YouTube? About a hundred dollars. <laughs> Kevin R. Smith is with us in chat, pointing out they're really not a war gamer, but they wanted to swing on by. I wish everybody a happy holidays. Well, Kevin, you may want to hang out. You may want to hang out. As I, as I mentioned in the open, there might be some giveaways. There may be. I keep saying that, so obviously it means, yes, there's going to be some. It's like, that would make me a real dick. But I was like, oh, yeah, everybody. Like, yeah, maybe there's gonna be giveaways. And I finished up and I'm like, nope, there's not. <laughs> All right, last thing before uh we move along. So you may have noticed that uh one of my new series rolled out last night, as I had mentioned it would, and it is the Paizo preview. So each month, within a couple of days of receiving, maybe even on the day package comes uh but within a couple of days of receiving the latest paizo products for pathfinder and starfinder role-playing games i am going to share a first look video so if you had if you missed that episode last night or you know maybe you're not like super into pathfinder and starfinder you will still see the like hardcover like the major releases, like the Lost Omens releases or things like Crown of the Cobalt King, which was a hardcover uh, compilation of adventures. I don't know if we're going to see Kingmaker or not. My contact with Paizo had said previously that they were going to send it out, but I haven't seen it. So I've, I, you know, shot them an email to find out, you know, was it sent out? Did it get lost? Did it go out UPS by any chance? I'm trying to remember if Paizo uses. <laughs> no, I think they used the post office. So that is one of the four new series that, uh, well, the other three shows are going to premiere in January. But I wanted to let you know what they are. So, of course, first off, we're going to have the Paizo preview. Then we've got the classic Cthulhu case files, where I will take a look at a classic Chaosium Call of Cthulhu adventure from the first three editions of Call of Cthulhu. And if it's something I, I ran back like in the 80s, 90s, the aughts, the tens, I'll actually talk about it. So that is going to be one of the shows. Also, I'll be doing Dungeons and Dragons TSR Treasures, where every month I will look back at a classic Dungeons and Dragons adventure. We might tackle some in a row, maybe against the slavers as an example. So each and every month I will have that. And then finally, I'm going to have a series, and it's going to be called Why You Should Play, dot, dot, dot. And then it will be a role-playing game system. So as an example, it might be Why You Should Play Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, or Why Should You Play 
RuneQuest. So each and every month. So each week will be a different show is essentially what you're looking at. So I'm hoping, knock on wood, of course, that there'll be about five videos a week. So still we'll do the three live shows as well as uh, whatever series is for that. Hopefully at least one review. So we'll see. Something else I should also point out is don't be shocked if at some point next year I don't do a first look at a game on every show or a review on every show because I may not have stuff to share. So, never know, because you got to remember, I've, I've mentioned this before, I'm not one of these people, I don't go banging on the door of the publisher with my hand out. Oh, okay, could I get... You know, it, that's just never been my style. So, once again, another reason why, if you're a fan of a publisher that I'm not covering, you know, shoot them an email. Because, believe it or not, a lot of times, your, your, you know, your contact is much more valuable than mine. Because you're a customer of theirs, I'm not. So, Flaming Heron says, Jeff Rant streams. Uh, no. I, there, there aren't going to be like, you know, I'm not going to devote the entire show to a rant or something like that. William asks if I do interviews with creators. Yes. I've tried to, because I want to do like Tuesday talks or something like that and actually share, share those on the live stream. I just, I never get enough people who are interested in doing interviews. And some of the people who contact me that want me to do interviews, it's sort of like, really, you just, you just want to talk up your Kickstarter that's coming. That's it. I mean, and it's like, you're not even sending me a preview of your Kickstarter, but you want me to like interview you. So, gotta remember, there's so, some publishers out there that think they're doing you a favor, or I should me a favor, uh, by like doing interviews with me. And I'm like, not, not really. <laughs> so, Mr. ADT says, why? You should play with yourself a solo game series. Ah! Ah! Yes. Or just call it playing with myself, right? Just don't say, why should you play? Just come out right out and say it. Playing with myself. And then it's a solitaire game video. All righty. So once again, a little house cleaning, sharing some stuff with you as well. So we're going to jump on into the Hill of Death, Champion Hill from Tiny Battle Publishing. In just a moment, but first, I think it's time for a, whoa, you know what? I don't know if I have the intermission video set up. This was another crazy day where I was running around. We'll check. If not, this video is going to change <laughs> real quick. It's intermission time, folks. Time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building. Every item of fresh, appetizing taste treat. This Christmas, give the gift of learning and dreaming with the learning tools from Texas Instruments. Data Man, with exciting math games and activities to open young minds to the wonder of numbers. And for high school students, the TI-30 helps them understand how math can build the beginning of a dream. The TI-30 and Data Man, in the tradition of the little professor, from Texas Instruments, innovators in personal electronics. My favorite heroes are Spider-Man my Uncle Fred. My favorite heroes are Wonder Woman and my mama. My favorite heroes are the Hulk and Great Aunt Molly. Underoos. They even come out heroes against warm water and detergents. It's intermission time, folks. 
time out for a delicious snack in our sparkling refreshment building. Every item a fresh, appetizing taste treat. people on your list. Wendy's $5 gift certificates. Available now at participating Wendy's. Welcome to Woolworth, where there's always something worth shopping for. Doll cases? Every little girl's favorites, including baby doll, wardrobe trunk, and My Little Pony collector's case. Your choice, $10.99. Cassette recorders. Dual deck star studio from Child Guidance with microphone and headset, now $69.99. Playboards? Sure, brand new with lots of magnetic action. Junior sets just $5, deluxe sets $10. Right now at Woolworth, where shopping for values is a tradition. Merry Christmas! It's a joy to serve Wilkins coffee to so many people at Christmas. It's a joy to you. You're not pulling the sled. This season, your Bell Phone Center store suggests a present for the future. Hello? A genuine Bell telephone. People use it long after other gifts are forgotten. Give one for the fun of it, the looks of it, or for making important calls with a single touch. There are so many genuine Bell phones and services, you may even choose a gift certificate. But come in soon, because nothing's as special as a present that lasts into the future. Bell Phone Center, it's for you. Yes, a Wilkins Christmas ad. When Aaron says Wilkins is promoting slavery? Come on, Wilkins is supposed to be a reindeer. He's got the little reindeer antlers on. Unfortunately, the quality of that wasn't very good. It was weird because I had seen the Christmas wilkins coffee commercial before and i could have swore it was far far better quality than that video there because i was searching all over for it to include it i've been i've been waiting i've been waiting for the last show before christmas to include that into the mix and then we have the uh bell ma bell telephones that i i always kind of chuckle it's like give a phone just for the fun of it oh yes because wow giving away a home phone mm, that's exciting <laughs> all right so that is the last of our holiday brief intermissions or at least i should say our christmas holiday intermissions so we're going to dive on in and take a first look at the Hill of Death Champion Hill from Tiny Battle Publishing. It is designed by my good friend Herman Lutman with art and graphic design provided by Jose Ramon Flora. Sure, I mispronounced that last name. The game is for two players. Ages 14 and up is my guess. Plays in around 90 to 180 minutes. Does carry an MSRP of $55. It is available now. Swing on over to the other camera here. I've got the first in a Shattered Union series. Let's get the shrink off of here. So this is a new American Civil War series designed by, I don't know if all the games will be designed by Herman, but the, the game mechanics, the core mechanics of this system are designed by Herman. Let's take a look at the back here. 
Heavily influenced by his popular and most fearful sacrifice, Herm Lutman's shattered union, I don't know, I've never called Herman Herm. I think it's a Mark H. Walker thing, maybe. Oh, actually, no, I think I've heard some other people call him Herm. Anyway, Herm Lutman's Shattered Union series is a new line of American Civil War war games designed to be accessible to gamers of any experience level. The series aims to provide not only a playable war game experience in about three hours, but also to provide a realistic simulation of a 19th century battlefield. The Hill of Death is the first module in the Shattered Union series. The game covers the entire Battle of Champion Hill. This critical engagement was fought just outside of Vicksburg, Mississippi, on May 16, 1863, between the Union Army of the Tennessee, under Major General Ulysses S. Grant, and the Confederate Army of Vicksburg, under Lieutenant General John C. Pemberton. Let's jump on in. So the question was asked if I do interviews with creators. I've interviewed my pal Herman, I think, three times. Twice. Once to, no, I want to, I take that back. I've, I've interviewed him four or five times because I've interviewed him at least twice at Origins on camera. And I've done one uh, Skype interview with him as well. And funny enough, I have been emailing him, you know, just wish him, you know, happy holidays and everything. And uh, I'm going to ask, I was going to ask him if he wanted to uh, take some time out to do an interview about uh, some of his upcoming games. He's got a zombie game that is coming from GMT. And if you follow the gaming gang at all, you know that I love Dawn of the Zeds. It is, it's my favorite zombie game. It really is. All right, so we've got some dice. We've got a deck of cards. I'm going to take a guess. We've got a few different decks in here. We've got our rules. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, I believe this is the module rules. So we may have different rules for, uh, we've got a, a single like core set of rules. And then depending on what battle it represents, what battle is being simulated is going to determine the module rules. So this is the overall rule book. We're going to take a peek here. So we've got our components. So we're going to have uh, some two letter codes for our commanding general. And then we will have, I feel like we've got combat movement is my guess. So we've got a blue or a gray number. That's strength points, okay. And then the red number is its cohesion rating. Okay, all right, sweet. Talking about different markers sequence of play. So one thing that my friend Herman likes to include in his game designs is a lot of chaos. A, a lot of possibilities of events taking place that did not historically take place, but were well within the realm of possibility. So I would not be surprised if we have something along those lines so I'm curious if we've got, or if we're going to have chit pull. Oh, no, we've got activation cards. So there you go. That's something else that I know Herman likes to include in his designs is a, a random activation, which Herman designs excellent games. It doesn't matter if it's a historical game or a fantastical game. He really does. He he designed a baseball game that I reviewed, High and Tight, which jokingly I referred, I said that uh, that was how I liked my women. <laughs> yes, I know, I know, I'm an evil man. I'm bad. So yes, I know, I, I guess I, I guess I'm not woke enough. <laughs> yes, I said that. 
Anyway, it was years ago. We're talking like 10 years ago. So my pal Herman's got a lot of uh, design game. I'll tell you that much. All right. So it looks like we've got a grand total of about 14 pages of rules. Okay, 15. We got 15 pages. Skedaddle! So uh, it's like, I don't think it's routing. Skedaddle is more, uh, it's retreating, but it's, it's not necessarily routing. All right, so then we've got what appears to probably be our scenario book and our game module rules. There we go. Actually, this looks pretty identical with the command decision phase, activation, prior combat. Then we've got our scenarios. So we have a tutorial scenario. And then we have, looks like the full battle. Yep. There you go. So some optional units. Actually, most of the page space here, last four pages is kind of devoted to just an example of play. Or does, let's take, yeah, I guess each turn, it's walking you through what you do. That's kind of cool. It's not an example of play, but it's, it's telling uh, each of the players that's walking them through what they're going to need to do. So as an example, it says, the Union player seeds two formation activation cards for McLernan's core only. So it says game turns one and two. Only the grant a uh, commander in chief. I assume that's what the CIC represents here. Card is seated along with the normally allowed event cards. Confederate player does not seed any formation activation cards. Only the Pemberton A commander in chief card and the normal event cards are seated. So it's telling us, okay, you know, these are some certain things that are going to take place. I kind of like that too because it's it's aiming for I don't want to necessarily say simula simulation. I almost said simulation. I just I just want to butcher the English language today. I just want to make up words. This is one of those uh, American Civil Warrior games. Yes. Anyway, it it is kind of, it looks like it is aiming for something that ref reflects the ebb and flow of the battle itself. So those are the modular rules. So now we've got our counters. It's like we've got a couple of counter sheets and... Um, maybe you got three and they are cut so well that they're all popping out. So William says they like their Avalon Hill games. Some Avalon Hill games still are, are fantastic. I, some of them have not aged very well. So since we're talking about war games at the moment, so. Fleming Aaron says, talking like a true Southerner. No, I, I'm a Northerner and I'm a Yank. You know that. Born and raised outside, outside Chicago. So William says, the, it's the soda that I'm drinking. Anyway, we'll get a closer look here because I have the autofocus going tonight. I switch between lenses depending on if I need to hold something up, get a closer look at. So here we've got, there's the strength, the cohesion. That's the artillery there. And we have the commander is represented by, I guess, I think it's their general. 
represented by the abbreviation there. And do we have reduced sides? It looks like we do. So it appears the units have step reduction. But as you can see, all these counters have already fallen out. And no, I do not clip counters. And I know that makes me a heathen. Sorry, I just don't have time to clip counters. If I were somebody who, you know, did one video a week talking about a game, maybe then I'd clip counters. But I've got a, a whole lot of stuff to do. Yeah, look at this. Look at these all. Hey, pre-punch. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mark H. Walker. <laughs> hey, I'd rather have him pop it off like that rather than be like, oh, for crying out loud. Another, another counter tour. Oh, there you go. So these are the Confederates and Butternuts. Got a Butternut background there for them. And the other counter sheet is no doubt going to be informational counters. Anyway, I was going to say, since we're talking about war games, uh, the other night when I was sharing the news about 18 EUS from GMT Games, I had mentioned that there was another game that was on the P500 that I really wanted to talk about, but there had been no images. And I said, oh, I'll, I'll talk about what it is a bit later on. And then I forgot. Uh, and it's the latest in the Down in Flames series. So if you're familiar with Down in Flames, it was created by Dan Verson. And I was introduced to the game at Con Sim World. And Tempe, Arizona, of course, this is, it was after I just had launched the gaming gang with my best friend, Elliot Miller, and I went to Con Sim World, which is pretty much a, a war gaming convention. And I mean, we're talking, you know, serious grill yards there. And they were doing a tournament and it was you know basically they would teach how to play and it's uh air combat world war ii air combat and each player gets uh a fight usually a fighter and a wingman and it was excellent it's it's card driven and of course it was out of print and i know dan Verson games had been publishing it and then we got Wild Blue Yonder a few years ago from GMT, which is essentially the same game, and it's fantastic. I gave it, a, I want to say I gave it a 10 out of 10. Worst case scenario, I may have given it a 9.5 out of 10. But it's uh, a new release that's coming for it, and I believe it is the Pacific. Uh, I think it's like 1943, something like that. So, unfortunately, all I don't, I don't even think they had the the cover of it, the cover artwork. So that was what I meant to tell you. And then, of course, you know me, <laughs> I get to rambling about something, and it's like, and it's always like 20 minutes after the show ends, I'll be sitting there going. Ah, oh, damn it. I said, hey, I'll talk about this. <laughs> then I'm like, I didn't. Yep. It's a live show. What can I tell you? So here is the map, the game map. Uh, it is paper. It's a uh, decent stock. Decent paper stock there. So here we have, there's, there's Champion Hill. Pretty nice. It's got a traditional feel to it as far as the iconography, I guess we'll say, the terrain. But it also has a bit of a modern look to it as well, which I really appreciate. 
because I, I talk about this all the time and I know folks out there probably get tired of me mentioning this, but if we're, if we're going to continue to try to keep war gaming as a viable genre of our hobby, of a, of a niche of a niche hobby, we got to find ways to bring new fresh blood in and just putting out the same old decision games releases tank going to do it dooley the I say it all the time the attack factor like the the attack the defense movement allowance nato iconography plain old black and white or grayscale board is not going to pull in the 13 year olds not these days so something like this definitely this is this is still a classic look for a war game, but it has some visual pop from the counters representing units. And yes, I'll admit, as we get a closer look at the artwork, and you may have noticed this as we were taking a look at the rules, uh, the artwork is functional. I wouldn't say anything, you know, makes it stand out, but it's functional. This is also a small publisher. This is not some huge publisher. Uh, and I know a lot of people talk about like GMT games and wow, you know how massive they are. They're just a little publisher too. They just happen to be a big publisher in the world of war gaming compared to other publishers. So we got our combat results, weapon ranges, ammunition problems, fire combat advantages. Cohesion test, close combat test. And it, look, it looks like we've got different factors and they're color coded as well. So that's kind of interesting. The defensive fire results and close combat advantages. And then brutal melee. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, Herman's design, you can just see, even not reading the rules or anything, you can already tell that. It's not, and no offense to William, it's not William's Avalon Hill war game. And yes, I love some Avalon Hill. I've got some Avalon Hill titles behind me. But it's got a much more modern look and vibe to it. And to be very honest, this is the sort of game that I could get my nephew Cameron to sit down and play. In fact, he and his friends, he's got about six friends, which now that my, my nephew is in the Illinois Air National Guard, uh, I should say Air Force Guard, I always mix it up. He's not in the Air Force. He's in the Air Force Guard, I want to say. I bet he's got, a, he's got a lot more friends who would be into it. I showed them how to play uh, Wild Blue Yonder. The game I was just talking about, how GMT's got a, a new title up on their P500. And they were like, oh my God, this game is so cool. And once again, that's the sort of game that's, that's a bit different. It's not your just typical traditional Hex Encounter war game. And this looks to be uh, taking a unique approach as well. All right, so we've got the player aid chart, the map, the three counter sheets that look, I don't almost all of them are punched already. Fine with me. We have the module rules as well as the series rule book. And that is what we find when we take everything from the Hill of Death, Champion Hill, outside the box. So Happy Wargamer says, this looks good. I might have to get it. Once again, it is from Tiny Battle Publishing. So, of course, I always have a link to the publisher of the game we're looking at in the show notes. Oh, damn. You know what? Hey, thank you very much. Mr. Eddie T said, what about the cards? Ah, 
What do you mean? What about him? See, I could have wrapped up and then, all right, now I've got crap from the counter sheet all over. I would have wrapped up, gone upstairs, been like, okay, so I mean, yeah, I'm going to do my, you know, timestamps. Be like, oh, damn it. I forgot to show the cards. <laughs> okay, here's six sided dice. I don't think we need to devote a lot of time to the dice. They're six sided dice of different colors. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right. If the shrink wrap will come off. Okay. So they are all activation cards. How about that? I, I said I thought, oh, it's probably a few different decks. It's not. It is one single deck. So, so we got Stevenson, activate one brigade. So I'm going to take a guess that we're going to utilize different sections of these cards. So this is Stevenson's division. So it looks like we've got three cards devoted to the division here. And then each one's different. So we've got defend one MP, and then it's got some instructions there, what they can and cannot do. Maneuver four MP and march order. So they can't engage in combat there. And then attack two MP. So once again, as you can see, this being driven, card driven, things are going to be kind of different. It's not an I go, you go sort of setup. Okay, then there's Pemberton, who's commander of the Confederate forces. So that's a Pemberton B. And I know from the rules we saw there was uh, a Grant as well as Pemberton A's. Blind Fury, this might be an event. We got Loring, there's Pemberton A. Harassing Fire, Inspirational Leadership, The Rebel Yell. Come on, here they are. For Dixie, Tactical Initiative, Command Confusion, Murderous Volleys, Open Fire. So then we've got another brigade commander here. Friction of war. This looks like it's neither side. Fog of war. There we go. Now we get into the Union. So there's Grant. Open fire. Hot-headed Rebs. McPherson. He was a great commander. I'm trying to remember. But I think McPherson was at the Battle of Chattanooga. I think it was the Battle of Chattanooga he was killed. So William says, Billy Idol has a card? Yep, sure does. And we got McClernand. Inspirational leadership, harassing fire. There's our Grant A. More McClernand. On to Vicksburg. So obviously enough, this is in 1863, before Ulysses S. Grant was placed in charge of the, well, wasn't really, Meade was still commander of the Army of the Potomac, but Grant kind of <laughs> rode with him. He was, he was kind of riding shotgun. But uh, Grant was placed in overall command of the, human, the Union armies. Right, so there are our two decks of cards as well. So there you have it. Once again, thanks, Mr. Eddie T, for pointing out that I had forgotten the cards. <laughs> now we have taken a look at everything inside the Hill of Death. Champion Hill from Tiny Battle Publishing. Mr. AT's like, you're welcome. No, seriously, thanks a lot. You know me. 
come on, I, I, I get rolling talking about something. It's like, oh, yeah, okay. I don't know. Maybe that's part of my charm, but I doubt it. <laughs> Once again, the Hill of Death is designed by my good friend, Herman Lutman. It is available now. It's for two players, ages 14 and up. Plays around 90, which I assume is going to be the tutorial mission or scenario. Uh, up to 180 minutes. Carries an MSRP of $55. Sweet. So, the final episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch for 2022 is a War Game Wednesday. How's about that? Pretty sweet. All right. So, I am going to wrap up, but. As I pointed out earlier, I've mentioned this twice now, that eh, you wanted to hang around, you want to be watching live, because there might be giveaways. So, to celebrate the holiday season, I know over at Drive-Thru RPG, they always like to, in early January, they usually roll out their uh, New Year New Game Sale. So, I am going to steal some inspiration from that and offer each and every one of you who is watching live or who shoots me an email within an hour of the stream ending. So normally with my contests, it's, it's pretty open. You don't have to be watching live. This isn't a contest. This is a giveaway. So it's a bit different. So you needed to be watching live to take part in the giveaway, but I understand there, there are some people out there who, I guess it's, they get off of work about this time and they, they watch the show. So I don't want to cheat them out of it. In fact, you know what I'll do? I will, I will actually extend this out to midnight central time. So Everybody who's watching live, everybody who catches the show, who shoots me an email at jeffmacalier at thegaminggang.com. And if you can't figure that out, go to thegaminggang.com. There's a contact. It's got my email address right there. Tell me which one of these role-playing game PDFs you would like. So you have a choice of, and I... I went with companies who have always been like on our side, who have supported the gaming gang really, really nicely. So you can choose from the Call of Cthulhu starter set or the Rune Quest starter set from our friends over at Chaosium Inc. Or you can select the Alien starter set. Or the core rules for Vossen. In fact, I just gave away Seasons of Mystery earlier tonight. So you can choose one of those, which are from our friends over at Free League Publishing. Or you might be interested in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, the starter set. Or staying with a Warhammer theme, but changing it up. There's also the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound starter set. So maybe you'd prefer to choose one of those. Lastly, we also have our friends over at Paizo Inc. So I talk about it all the time. If you're feeling dissatisfaction with the direction D&D is taken or you don't feel you get enough D&D content or they don't provide enough info in the, in the releases about the settings, always Pathfinder. And of course, you got Starfinder as well. So lastly, you can choose either the Pathfinder beginner box. I think they're called beginner boxes off the top of my head, if I remember right, or the Starfinder beginner box. And both of those are from our pals at Paizo Inc. So happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Enjoy the Festivus with the rest of us. Or if you don't celebrate anything, and enjoy the cold weather.
Yes. And don't forget, choose one of those. Send me an email and I will get your chosen PDF to you. So that is my holiday gift to each and every one of you watching live and who ends up watching this in the next couple hours or so. So Joseph Quam has uh, popped in to say uh, thank you. You're very welcome. Bane122 is popping on in, wishing everyone a happy holidays. We haven't seen Bane in a, in a bit. I think I have said hello to, oh, Tessie Trekkies here. I don't think I said hello to Tessie Trekkie. So hello, Tessie Trekkie. You know me. I always try to make sure to say hello to everybody. He stops in and chat because, you know, I understand you don't need to. You don't have to. I understand you don't have to watch this at all. So, all righty. Anyway, everybody, happy holidays. Thank you so very, very much. And, of course, remember, just because I'm not doing live streams doesn't mean there isn't going to be content. Yes, there are more videos coming. In fact, I didn't put it up today because it's been another crazy day. But yes, my review of Pathfinder Lost Omens Impossible Lands will be up, I promise. Worst case scenario, day after tomorrow. Probably tomorrow. So, it's coming. I promise you. All right, if you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. Well, not only let you know when the Dispatch streams live in 2023 at 7 p.m. Central each and every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evening right here on YouTube. But it'll also inform you when I upload other standalone videos, such as my aforementioned upcoming review of Pathfinder Impossible Lands, as well as my new series that are rolling out, one of which did last night, and the other three will be in January, that you'll be seeing those as well. If you watch live, thank you very much. Don't forget, take advantage of the giveaway. See, people thought maybe it'd be a contest. They'd give away a couple of things. I'm taking care of it. So Mr. ADT's like, what's that email address again, Jeff? All right, so wrapping up. See you, everybody. Yeah, what was that email address? Yeah, anyway, moving right along. It's Jeff McAleer at thegaminggang.com. First case, swing over to thegaminggang.com and take a peek at, uh, I think it's contact, contact us or something like that. Or worst case scenario, advertise with us. You can click on that and you will certainly get my email address there. <laughs> so Flaming Heron shares it in chat for those who don't want to look. Yeah, I was gonna, uh, before I wrap up, I should also mention if you, if you watch the videos, but you never go over to thegaminggang.com, you're really missing out because Sammy does reviews. I've had other contributors who shared role-playing game PDF reviews. There's all the reviews that Elliot did. We've had uh, quite a lot of contributors over the years. And all of that is not contained here on the Gaming Gang channel. So you're missing out on a ton. Plus, if you're into comic books, we share what's coming each and every week from the major publishers as well. So anyway, email address. Flaming here on the shared it, Jeff McAleer at thegaminggang.com. Anyway, as I was saying, if you're watching live, be sure to take part in the giveaway. And thanks for hanging out watching live. If you took part in chat, a bigger thank you. Still getting the same prize. You're not getting extra prizes. You're not getting extra gifts. You just get extra appreciation for taking part in chat. Because not only do you keep me company, to keep each other company as well. But of course, I know a lot of people out there, they don't have an opportunity to watch live. doesn't matter if you're watching live or on Memorex. I really do appreciate each and every one of you who takes time out to watch any of the videos. 
here on the Gaming Gang channel. And you know all the contests are almost always, I think 95% of the contests I've run have always been open to everybody. Didn't matter if you watched live or you watch after the fact. Tonight, it was just a special thank you to those of you who either watch live or watch very soon after the stream ends. Everybody, once again, have a wonderful holiday season. Be careful out there. Be good to each other as well. But be careful. I know we've got a lot of terrible weather heading uh, many people's ways. Some people have already dealt with it. But I look forward to having each and every one of you join me once again in the new year. And of course, here's hoping each and every one of you gets to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. See you next year, everybody. And now, folks, it's time to say goodnight. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, that's okay. You don't have to leave just yet. In fact, why don't you subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel right here or take a peek at the latest live stream or even find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks again for watching.